When I first saw No Place for Bravery, I immediately got vibes from two games, Hyperlight Drifter and Children of Mortar, so obviously I was quite excited. Who wouldn't be with those two comparisons? One is considered an indie classic, and the other very much an underrated gem. Let's see how this hardcore action game stands up. Before we get into it, hit that subscribe button and that bell button, it will be the best thing you do today. Unless you subscribe to my other channel, A Bit More Jordan, for a lot more me, taking you through long video game retrospectives. So, no place for bravery. This is a hardcore action game that stars a burly tavern owner called Thorn in a medieval-like world. Ten years ago, whilst on a hunting trip, his daughter Leaf was taken by a dark warlock. And this is where the opening of the game begins pretty much. You get a feel for the tutorial as rank enemies prowl the countryside. Leaf is snatched and you make your way home to your tavern where a vicious attacker goes at you. When you slay it, lopping it into quarters because, you know, five is a bit too much, out pops a child with broken legs. Yes, a boy pops out and our burly brewer takes it upon himself to raise him as his own. When we come to the present day, as Thorn is exploring the world with an acquaintance, he bumps into the warlock again, and the urge to hunt him down and find his daughter sparks up once more. So that's what he's doing, even if it means parting way with his wife. After 10 years, his wife has no more Fs to give, but he, he does. That's the gist of the story. The boy with the broken legs accompanies you upon your back in a weird way as you murder and execute goblins. Couldn't he have just like stayed at home for a bit? I'm all for inclusivity of people with disabilities, but a murderous rampage seems a little bit too far. Really not the time or place for it, but hey, here's just thought that counts. I found the story to be okay. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be, since they've rather pushed that narrative aspect to it. It is a big part of the PR. I was interested in finding out the outcome, but the moment-to-moment -moment scenes didn't do a whole lot for me. I found the dialogue to be written disjointedly. Someone would say one thing, yet the reply seemed to ignore it, or reply in an odd way. It didn't feel like it was written by native English speakers. I'm guessing it was originally in a different language, probably Brazilian Portuguese, where the developers are from, and then translated a little bit awkwardly. It's not bad or anything, as it does serve its purpose, but I was just expecting something a bit more epic. The combat is pretty much what you'll be doing the entire game. Yeah, there's exploration, small puzzles and hub areas, but damn, you'll be bashing away at goblins like your life depends on it, which it does, of course. It's a very hardcore action game where enemies hit fast and hard. Your health drains quickly and you don't have any invincibility frames after you get hit, which I'm pretty sure is a crime against gaming, but I'll let it slide since it's made with those wanting the challenge in mind. It ain't a Peppa Pig game. You're gonna die. A lot. The action is based almost entirely around parrying your enemy's attacks, which drains their stamina to put them into a confused stupor. But you have to be careful since that can easily happen to you if you stretch yourself too thin. And yeah, that will happen a lot. In fact, the tutorial bit I mentioned where your daughter gets kidnapped is a massive wake-up call for those who need to do this in this game. Since the grunt enemies, you don't really need to parry them too much, and the game doesn't push you in that technique direction in any serious way at first, so by the time you get to the boss, you've probably ignored it. Well, don't, because this massive smeghead turns up and decides you're some sort of piñata and goes to town on you. Oh man, get learning how to parry because normal attacks will just end up with your limbs scattered on the floor instead of his. Yeah, just parry until he's confused, then you go to town on him. But it's still not that easy since the window is quite short, especially compared to other games that you may be used to. Just poke him a couple of times, then be on your guard straight away. You have way less time than you think. That's pretty much the game. You'll be gaining new abilities and items and traveling all over to different dungeons. You'll get a hammer, which leaves you as vulnerable as myself after a night of endless shots of Baijo at a work dinner. Man, those Chinese bosses love to lace you with booze. And then expect you to work at 7am the following day. Fun times. Anyway, tangents aside, it's fun if you like this kind of thing. I enjoyed it for the most part. It does feel a bit messy in places when there are more enemies and so little opportunity to defend and even attack. It's so, so easy to get absolutely mullered, so be prepared to die quite a lot. While I take most of this as just an opinion, I will stand by the fact that the archers can frankly eat something huge and phallic. I just don't think they're fun. 
They've not just crossed the line into annoying, but they've jumped over it and started playing bagpipes on the other side. Now that's annoying. They're even more deadly close up than at distance, since they spin on a sixpence with incredible aim. Not my favourite part of the game, I have to say. But as you can see, it is a gorgeous looking game. Perhaps my favourite part of the game. It's full of life, colour, detail, with very nice animation all round, especially on the rather elegant executions, which can net you a stamina refill if pulled off correctly. It's always worth trying to pull off the quick executions on new enemies just to see what will happen, especially the big bad guys. And while I do applaud the pixel art for the amount of effort gone into it with beautiful vistas, huge use of colour and plenty of animation frames, it's not all entirely to my liking. I get that this is just my opinion and I may be alone in thinking this but I'm not always a fan of this character style. I'm a fan of chunk in all aspects of life I would say, so when I see the spindly ass legs found in some games like this, it does put me off. One pixel width for your legs isn't just missing leg day once in a while, that's borderline negligence. Aside from those spindly ass people and enemies, it is a gorgeous game. Pixel artists are always pushing the boundaries with their imagination. It's amazing how far gaming has come on. And yes, before you say it, I do prefer classic pixel art because I'm stubborn, but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate what people are making these days. Who doesn't like hyper-violent pixel blood art and gore? Oh yes. Also, by the way, you can pet the dog if uh, you're one of those really annoying people on the internet. I should point out that there are plenty of accessibility options for those who are a bit pants. Yeah, you can select your difficulty and even customise each part like how much damage you take. Your repel window. Pretty cool for those in need or who just want to play for the story or those who enjoy smashing their testes with a hammer. There's room for every weirdo out there. Now, No Place for Bravery is available digitally on the Nintendo eShop for 18 quid in the UK and 20 bucks in the US and the same in Euros. That's a decent enough price for an indie game these days, especially one with such intricate artwork. As someone who's looked into getting pixel art done, pixel artists do not whore themselves out for a packet of biscuits like myself. They require actual money and time fair play to them. However, if you want it physically, well there's been no word of a western physical release, but as per usual, good old Japan is here to the rescue with a nice physical release that does play in English. So if you want to add it to your collection so you can keep it forever or get some resale value once you've had your fill with it, then check the links in the description. That's where you can order it and support us at the same time. Plus, in return for clicking our links, you can get a yummy 5% of any physical item from PlayAsia with our current discount code, STEENBOCK. But that's going to run out at the end of September, so if you're watching this in the future then hit that subscribe button and that bell button to discover our latest code via our weekly Monday's Let's Get Physical video series, I always keep you up to date with it. Before we get into the conclusion, I should also mention that the build that I played for the review code left a little bit to be desired in terms of performance in a few regards. Firstly, while it smooths during actual action segments, once in a while during exploration, the environment inexplicably jitters. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I also occasionally glitched into the environment causing me to reload the game. And then there's the transitions, whether to different screens on the map, changing to cutscenes, or just fumbling around in the menus, it doesn't feel like it's put together well. It never crashed or anything, but it always looked like it was about to fall to pieces. I suspect most of this will be patched out, maybe even before release, but we'll have to see. This didn't massively impede on my enjoyment, but I couldn't help notice all the small issues. It could have done with a little more time in the oven to give a much smoother, professional presentation. Overall though, no place for bravery, it's pretty good time. If you're a fan of hardcore action mixed with delicious pixel art, minus the spindly ass legs, then you will probably enjoy this. And if you do enjoy spindly legs, well then you've got a fetish and should be put on some sort of government list, but hey, at least you'll friggin' love this game. Is it perfect? Of course not. Not only counting the technical issues, the gameplay perhaps doesn't live up to its potential. It is fun, but it's not great and it could have been really badass, but the fighting does get a bit messy, and those archers can eat my fist. But for the time being, it's just a decent time for action fans who like a bit of a challenge, and even if not, No Place for Bravery is very generous with its accessibility options. A very solid 7 out of 10. Alright, thanks for watching. If you watched all the way through, leave me a leg emoji in the comments in honour of the spindly legs found here. If you want to purchase it physically, check the links below, and you can also grab some eShop credits from switchwatch.net. 
Big up to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boom Box, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knights, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Isa, V, Mental Traveler, Grant Cert, Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, and Kadacha. Go check out some of our other stuff, Digital Bargains on Sunday, Physical Switch Games on Monday, and my brand new channel, a bit more Jordan 4, a lot more me. It is good, I promise. See you there.